helplessness is your best friend, Savage. Welcome to my quick recommendation of the week. This is where I will pick any random YouTube user and recommend you check their work out on this website. The first person I'm going to recommend is the Internet Aristocrat. If you're looking for a straight-talking, slightly sarcastic person who talks about video games and, entertain and broad entertainment, this is person is going to be right up your street. Now, the Internet Aristocrat's two long-running series are the Hugbox Chronicles, where he will talk about the occasional internet drama of the week. This could range from everything from the last one that he produced, which was talking about the Tumblr's raid on 4chan, which completely blew, it, blew back in their face, and backlashes to cancel Colbert, and even... Refer uh, even the one where he talked about that celebrity who got harassment because he said what he wanted in a girlfriend. Question. How do you piss off 200,000 teenage girls, white knights, betas, and male feminists? Answer. Tell them you don't want to braid your girlfriend's armpit hair. That's something Nash Greer recently found out when a video he released online brought the fervor and hatred of tumblerettes and special snowflakes from all over the internet down upon him. Now, some of you may be saying, who the fuck is Nash Greer? Congratulations. That is the appropriate response to hearing his name. But for the sake of clarity, this is Nash Greer. 4chan. Why not? Let's go after 4chan. What could go wrong? It's never been done before. Nobody's ever tried to go after 4chan before. And it's obviously guaranteed to be successful. I mean, look at how well they did with End Father's Day. Clearly, this is a brilliant idea. And that is exactly what they decided to do. Now, you're taking a look at uh, a little image macro that was floating around for two to three weeks, maybe a month before the 4th of July. And uh, this was put up on Tumblr. Obviously, the HQ, the headquarters, for every SJW on the internet at this point. They use Twitter, but they live at Tumblr. As for his other web series, Tumblrisms, which talks about various themes on Tumblr, ranging from white privilege, cis scum, headmates, and thin privilege, which makes me stay away from Tumblr as Bob Chipman stays away from salad. All right. Well, we've got this little guy here, and he's going to represent, I don't know, an entire group of people. Now, we need something to represent his culture, his heritage. I don't know, a bike. Let's say this bike represents his culture. Look how, look how proud he is of it. Look at him pointing. He is very proud of his culture. Everything would be fine. This, this lovely neighborhood, this group of people and their culture, everything looks fine. But uh-oh, here comes the white man. Look at him. Look at those beady little eyes. He's, he's up to something, I tell you. Now, at its core, cultural appropriation is theft, at least if you're white. Remember the simple mantra. If they're white, it ain't right to use anything ever made by anybody else, because white people are thieves. Horrible thieves. Look at him. Look at him ride that bike. He took it. He took that culture, and he is riding it off. He doesn't care. Look at that little guy. He's so sad. Man, that white devil doesn't care a bit about his culture. He's popping a fucking wheelie. And does he does he feel any remorse? Nope. He just rides off into the sunset. Another white oppressor, part of the patriarchy, riding that, that culture down the road. He's bunny hopping that culture. He doesn't give a shit. That's not his culture. He doesn't he doesn't care. It's just entertainment for him. This is thinprivilege.tumblr.com and I'm sure, uh, you know, a majority of you who are watching this video have probably heard of this fucking Tumblr. It's pretty infamous. Now, you could look at something like this and say, holy shit, this has to be somebody trolling. This cannot fucking be real. And you could be right. At some level, this might be the most elaborate troll, you know, that's ever been put out there. But the thing to keep in mind as we move forward, even if this specific Tumblr were completely fictitious, even if the people running it were just trolling out of their ass, there are a lot of people that believe it. That's the scary fucking thing. I mean, that's the scary fucking thing about Tumblr in general. And you'll see that as this series goes on. That uh, there, there are going to be a couple future episodes where we're going to look specifically at Tumblrs that created bullshit issues that were made by trolls just fucking around. 
and they actually were taken seriously, and it became something. That's how fucking nuts Tumblr is. So without further ado, right, now that we've got a basic idea of what we're getting into, let's take a look at thisisthinprivilege.tumblr.com. Well, we are off to a good start. This is Thin Privilege has an FAQ section. As you know, I, I don't like to be uninformed, and an FAQ section is great. It helps me check that privilege to make sure I don't hurt any special snowflakes and make them melt. And it says, how can white people fight the white supremacy? And it links you to two different things. So let's let's pop over and just take a take a glance at what that is. Now that leads us over to another uh, Tumblr. I don't know if that's associated. Earlier it said that this was run by four black people with attitudes and away with words. And if you noticed at the beginning we only saw three people, and this is a fourth. Maybe this is the fourth person they were talking about. So it's a uh, a blog post or um, you know an essay, really however you want to look at it. But let's take a look at a little bit of it and kind of see what uh, what they're talking about. Fourth, I need Media Hollywood, whoever to realize that people of color can have complicated roles, dark skin, natural hair, and are human beings. Like Game of Thrones, obviously this story will contain more European slash white characters, has two African descent persons, and he's a pirate with less than 100 words combined, if that. I'm tired of all these stories, movies, books, making me feel like white people are the only people who ever had adventures, were heroes, have conflicts, and doubt their abilities even if they are excellent people. I'm tired of race being a way to reel in viewers with controversy instead of because it makes the sense that people of color should be involved in everything white people are involved in. Shows like NBC's Scandal need more light, but I shouldn't have to be excited because five of the 14 characters are people of color. The point is, we have a rich history of stories to be told. They can be just as good as Harry Potter, Game of Thrones, Dexter, and BBC's Sherlock or Supernatural. Well, what a fantastic appeal that is to all those different creators of uh, various forms of media and entertainment, be they authors or screenwriters, whether they're stationed in Hollywood or New York. Why, it doesn't show the least bit of egotism or narcissism or hubris to think that you should demand that somebody craft a story specifically for you, or just characters they created and spent years crafting, just because they don't appeal to you specifically. The Internet Aristocrat also does the occasional live stream. That is a few and very far between. I think he's only done two so far. So I wouldn't hold your breath for another one. And it also, if I had to level one bit of complaint against the Internet Aristocrat, is his videos are very few and far between. I think the last video he produced was over two weeks ago. But, you know, I'm not going to demand he step up production because he might have a very important and hectic lifestyle to do in this and he doesn't take he probably doesn't take his YouTube channel overtly seriously. So anyway, I would recommend checking the Internet Aristocrat out. Hopefully I've hopefully he will enlighten you and enrich you and educate you and make you laugh at one point. So anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.